It's inconceivable that in the past few months, the administration has been withholding weapons and ammunition to Israel. We've given you $20 billion recently. We gave you $300 billion over the course of Israel's life. Inconceivable that you would defy us. Why? In fact, we're gonna ask you guys in a snap poll during the YouTube chat right here. Do you think Israel is a special ally of the United States? I'm gonna make the argument that they are not. My guess is that Ben's gonna make the argument that they are. But hold for that discussion. First, let Ben give you the facts. All right, so you got the snap poll going right there. And as Jank laid out, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was publicly chiding Biden for withholding some military aid to Israel, calling it inconceivable. He keeps using that word. I don't think it means what he thinks it means. <laughs> Good Princess uh, Bride. Thank reference. you very much. Uh, we will clarify what exactly he's talking about and whether he has a right to demand more American aid. But first, here is the full video. When Secretary Blinken was recently here in Israel, we had a candid conversation. I said I deeply appreciated the support the U.S. has given Israel from the beginning of the war. But I also said something else. I said it's inconceivable that in the past few months, the administration has been withholding weapons and ammunition to Israel. Israel, America's closest ally, fighting for its life, fighting against Iran and our other common enemies. Secretary Blinken assured me that the administration is working day and night to remove these bottlenecks. I certainly hope that's the case. It should be the case. During World War II, Churchill told the United States, give us the tools, we'll do the job. And I say, give us the tools and we'll finish the job a lot faster. Presumably Netanyahu is referring at least in part to Biden's decision to delay a shipment of 2,500 pound bombs amid to Israel amid their military operations in Rafah, which the Biden administration cautioned against doing a full scale military operation there. Uh, today, Antony Blinken was asked to confirm Netanyahu's account of their meeting and indicated that Netanyahu was exaggerating the US's withholding of aid, saying we are continuing to review one shipment that President Joe Biden has talked about with regard to 2000 pound bombs because of our concerns about their use in a densely populated area like Rafa. That remains under review, but everything else is moving as it normally would move with the perspective of making sure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself against this multiplicity of challenges it faces. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre doubled down on Blinken's statement. Has the administration been withholding weapons and ammunition for months like Netanyahu seems to be so saying? Let me just start off by saying that we generally do not know what he's talking about. Uh, we just don't. A couple of things that I do want to add, and you're right, there was one particular uh, shipment of munitions that was paused. There are no other pauses, none, no other pauses or holds in place. Everything else is moving in due process. Thanks for watching. Our audience has helped build TYT into the media giant it is today. Together, we can accomplish anything. Support our work and join us at tyt.com slash team. So they are correct, the US has not stopped armed shipments altogether. Last month, US officials clarified the Biden administration had continued to send military assistance to Israel since halting the shipment of bombs. The shipments that have been sent to Israel have included both offensive and defensive weaponry. The two US officials familiar with the shipment said, with the offensive weaponry including small arms. And more aid will likely be sent soon. Yesterday, the Washington Post reported that two key Democratic holdouts in the House and Senate signed off on a major arms sale to Israel, including 50 F-15 fighter jets worth more than $18 billion. After facing intense pressure from the Biden administration and pro-Israel advocates to allow the transaction to move forward, said three US officials familiar with the matter. The holdouts were Representative Gregory W. Meeks of New York and Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland. Besides the F-15s, which are not scheduled to arrive in Israel for years, the administration sought sign off on air to air missiles and joint direct attack munition kits, which retrofit unguided bombs with precision, with precision guidance. Um, so again, we have the uh, poll coming, is Israel a special ally of the United States? Uh, we'd love to hear you all weigh in. I believe that Israel is a special ally of the United States, that's my opinion as Jink. Uh, explained he does not agree, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts as to why. To me, I think it's undeniable that Israel is one of the few democracies in the Middle East, has 
been a very key and remains to be very key strategic ally for US interests, for intelligence sharing, for counterterrorism operations, for trying to make sure we have some way in that region to counter the increasingly belligerent actions of the nearly nuclear power Iran, who is certainly an adversary of not only the US, but of Western interests and values. And um, I think that that is a relationship that that um, aside from also being a great economic partner and many other reasons, mm -hmm. and one where we share many values is one that is essential to the US and always has been since Israel's founding. But I'm curious why you don't yeah. think so. So two different things, right? First, let's address Netanyahu real quick. Uh, so uh, why is it inconceivable that we would disagree with an ally? France disagreed with us uh, before the Iraq war and decided not to support us during the Iraq war. And they didn't do that because they hate us, they did that because they were a good friend. And they realized that the Iraq war was going to be a disaster and they were right. And I, and I wish we had listened to them, right? So why would it be inconceivable that we would have the slightest little disagreement with an ally? The air of obnoxious entitlement is unbearable. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yeah, and so he says, "Oh, we we are the closest allies." Well, that's what we're going to de uh, discuss and debate here. We have our common enemies, are they? I mean, partly they are, and partly you created those enemies. So now I have to fight your enemies. So the Palestinians were not the enemies of America; they were never the enemies of America. They, but now we have to deal with terrorism that happens every once in a while, partly related to the occupied territories because of Israel. So Israel created those enemies and now we have to fight them. We had no reason to go into Iraq. And now that's not just because of Israel, but Netanyahu is one of the neocons along with Rumsfeld, Cheney and the others and Bolton here in America that wanted to start a war with Iraq. How did that help us? It didn't help us, it hurt us massively. So everything that Netanyahu is, and Netanyahu is not all of Israel, all of Israel is not Netanyahu. But everything that Netanyahu has suggested throughout his entire career has hurt America. It, I don't, I've never seen him propose one thing that has helped America. And how unfortunately he's been the prime minister now for about 200 years straight in Israel, hyperbole. Okay, and he says, well, I need the money to, and the weapons to finish the job. But that's why he's holding back the weapons. Those are 2,000 pound bombs you're not supposed to drop in the middle of a civilian area. America never does it and we've committed many war crimes. And we won't even do that, we won't come close to doing that. So no, we're not gonna give you that. We've already given it to you many, many, many times and you dropped it in the middle of civilian areas and there's 37,000 dead, most of them, majority, literally a majority of them, women and children. So no, we're not gonna give you those slight little, and then again, the obnoxious entitlement. How dare you oppose me slightly? Brother, you're the leader of a foreign country. Country, not our country. You're not a congressman, you're not a senator. Okay, we'll take it under advisement. But other than that, look, I don't know why we have, and then Blinken's being apologetic about, oh, no, 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 it's only one little thing in carriage. Oh, please, I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing to Netanyahu? Who the hell is he? So if Justin Trudeau says, give me $20, million, $20 billion, and by the way, I'm gonna bomb the living crap out of Scandinavia and countries or whatever it is, right? They say that he was attacked, okay, whatever. We can get into yes or no on whether he should or should not obliterate whoever he's obliterating. Um, but then they say, no, Canada is a special ally. Canada is an ally, that doesn't mean I have to agree with everything Canada does. What if a weirdo psycho right winger gets in charge of Canada? Why, I don't think there is such a thing as a special ally. And I don't think that gets you any Real special privileges. Now, on top of that, when you talk about Israel, Ben, to address your points, brother, I really, I don't see it. The only thing that anybody ever says is, okay, they're a democracy, kind of, but not really. So they're a democracy within Israel, but the occupied territories that they control are not democracies. So that's like the worst democracy example you could possibly well, that's find. That's not the fault of Israel. Well, that's again, we would heavily debate. Hamas that. does not allow elections. They could be a democracy and no, they do no, not. They, they, and it is a democracy in the West Bank. They don't control their own territory. Uh, ben, you're right of, uh, about Hamas ending elections, no question about that. But even if they had elections, they don't control their own territory, so it's irrelevant. That's got nothing to do with whether it's yeah, a democracy. And look, or not. if you said to me, Canada is, again, using the Canada is a wonderful democracy, they are, but they occupy Greenland and Iceland, and they just won't let them go. And they say, oh, well, we offered peace deals, but those son of bitch terrorists and Iceland wouldn't take it, so we're just gonna keep occupying them. But you have to call us a democracy. I'd say, well, yeah, maybe the first couple of years is you're trying to work out a peace treaty. 57 years in, when you're occupying, you know, what if, for those are tiny countries. What if they're occupying Ireland? But Jim, and that's a good question, like the United Kingdom did do that for like for, right. you know, in the past. 
And so is it a democracy? Not really when you're occupying other countries. Well, they were still our ally at the time. But even if they were a democracy, so does a democracy get to do terrible oh, things? No, no, blanketly on those terms, you don't get to do terrible things, of course not. And I agree with you that whether someone's a special ally or not, you can still on a case by case basis criticize them and decide whether aid continues, that's fine. There's no blank check needs to stay forever. That said, I don't understand the purpose of debating this issue over and over when the points that we, I think, get established in our prior debates and conversations don't get integrated. So firstly, and and then also continually the actual threat that Israel faces gets downplayed by you in just inaccurate ways. So you said, you kind of brush by and you go, occasional terrorism. Well, that's not true. There's like multiple times every single week, basically since Israel's founding, there are missiles sent into Israel to the general population. That is terrorism, not occasionally, it's all the time. There's hundreds of examples of terrorist attacks of buses blowing up and coffee shops blowing up. That's not occasional, it's living under terror since the origin of the nation. So you can't keep saying that and never adding to the reality of the picture. If you wanna paint an accurate picture, please paint it accurately. And the same thing with the numbers of casualties too. We've so many times discussed this and you keep saying 37,000 people and you know undisputably for a fact, Hamas admits proudly that they do not distinguish between they're fighters and civilians. And so you keep saying as though the terrorist group that you agree is a terrorist group is no part of that number and keep saying it as though it's just innocent civilians and then take that terrorist group's numbers at 100% face value that somehow it's also majority women and children. As though the men somehow hide from bombs better than the women and children do. That doesn't even pass muster of common sense either. But again, you just keep ignoring that any terrorists have been killed in this. And then you talk about 2000 pound bombs, which you say the US doesn't do, the US has done in many wars. We say we don't do it anymore, but also you ignore the fact that they're not being dropped for no reason. There's a, there, there's a need mm. to destroy tunnels underneath the ground. But they don't destroy the tunnels. They are, they've destroyed so that's a why huge, it's absolutely no reason other do, than to murder Palestinians. They've destroyed a huge amount of the tunnels already, of course they have. No, that's that's when they go in the on the ground and then they blow up the tunnels by going inside. They showed for a fact on CNN, the IDF showed the tunnels after they had bombed the living crap out of an area and the tunnels were totally intact. They showed after a 2000 pound bomb specifically. So to be fair, I don't remember if they, those bombs exactly were 2000 pound bombs, right. but they showed tunnels perfectly intact after massive bombing right. campaigns. Okay. Because they're bombing the buildings, not the tunnels. And so how the about- The only way the tunnels get destroyed is when you put a bomb inside the tunnel. So how about all the other points I just made? Yeah, I'm very happy to address all those. So first of all, is there constant terrorism throughout this time? Yes. And so, the, and I, in the context I was saying it, Ben, I wasn't minimizing it in terms of Israel, I was saying we're constantly getting this terrorism that we have to deal with too because of Israel. So anytime you have well, a because power- of Israel's enemies who attack, no, because constantly. Israel is continuing to occupy those people for over and over because again. they keep attacking. Them. No, it's, it's the uh, same chicken or egg. It's same chicken or egg. No, no, no. Always debate, so but. look, that's the debate here. Okay, and so look, there's a couple of things here. We're asking you to vote on the poll. Is Israel a special ally of the United States? Because Netanyahu says we're a special ally. You have to listen to everything we say. So, well, that's a different uh, statement. The yeah. poll is they're a special ally. It doesn't yeah. mean attached no, to that. It, it, you have to listen right. to what that's they right. say. The poll is not. Does that mean then we have to listen to everything Netanyahu says? No. Is it just that first part? Is it a special ally? Right. And so, by the way, we I love doing it live. So watch the show live, six to eight p.m. It's in the it's in the chat, right? And for those of you who are not watching live, we have a link to vote in our website, tyt.com slash polls, because I genuinely am super curious what you guys think, okay? So now, but in terms of the terrorism and the chicken and the egg, Ben, so terrorism always comes out of a power dynamic mismatch. So the people that are powerful, the, the countries that are in charge, never do terrorism because they don't have to do terrorism. And it's kind of a definitional thing. So when America drops a bomb through a drone strike in Afghanistan and kills 81 people in a wedding party, we don't call that terrorism because we say by definition, it's a state power acting, it's not terrorism. No, I would argue that is massive terrorism. You just murdered 81 people in a wedding party. And it was accidental also, horrible, tragic, well, but accidental. Well, but again- They weren't targeting that way. Again, definitional, right? Whenever we do it, and I don't mean just Israel, I mean Israel, America, allied forces, etc. 
or any powerful. We might not even agree with India in their fight against the Tamil Tigers, right? But the Indians are stronger, the Tamil Tigers are weaker. Japan started doing kamikaze missions once they started losing. It is the act of desperation of the powerless. That doesn't excuse it, it doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't even mean that it was right when the African National Congress did it during apartheid. But it is what the powerless do because they don't have power. And now it doesn't excuse it because if they had jets, they'd use the jets. Right? So I'm not saying, oh, they're angels and they would, oh my God, if they had F 35s, they wouldn't use them. They would. But they do the terrorism because that's the only power they have. But the meanwhile, power they have we, is peaceful negotiations. No, but that's, so that's again, we're going to disagree How on. How did Israel make peace with Jordan, with Egypt, through negotiations, through and, peace? But that's exactly my point, Ben. And Netanyahu says, I'm not going to do negotiations. I don't think that a Palestinian state should ever exist. And says, I'm a special ally, you have to support me anyway. No, brother, no, you're not a special ally when you don't listen to a goddamn thing we said. Now, we're sending you $20 billion and you don't listen to us and go, well, I don't have to listen to you because I'm a special ally. Well, that's just made up mythological nonsense. What the hell is a special ally when you don't listen to a goddamn word we tell you, right? So now, when you know, on the numbers, I could say it this way, and I do often say it this way, 25,000 women and children killed. So the reason I say 37,000, there's definitely fighters in the 37,000. Fighters, terrorists, you call them whatever you want, okay? Uh, but I feel bad for the males, the innocent males that are also killed in Gaza. So not all the males that were killed are innocent, but my guess is a gigantic portion of the ones that were killed, just like the women and children, are innocent because they're dropping 2,000 pound bombs in the middle of cities. So the 37,000 number is not disputed by anyone outside of Israel. Even America doesn't dispute the 37,000 number or the 25,000. That's not even number. true. The, the, the <laughs> UN acknowledged that those numbers are lower confirmed numbers than, than had previously been reported. That also has No, they been say agreed. there's the people who are absolutely right. positively identified. Right, but that's the number and they've then those always are the people used. who are definitely dead, but right. we don't but know their the exact identity. But that's the number that had been used the entire war, and then that number got revised and it didn't but change it didn't in anybody's get revised, language. Ben, it because they'd get always revised. said they were confirmed before, and then they realized confirmed actually dead. it's less confirmed. Okay, you can't confirm somebody dead. If you don't know who the person is. Of course is. you can, if there's three dead bodies and right. I don't know their names, they're still dead and I can confirm they're dead. And how do you think it happens? It's a small side note, but how do you think it happens after an attack? Like after what happened in the hostage rescue? Instantly Hamas knows there's 247 people dead. How did they count that instantly and within an hour ben, of attack? How do they do that? Human rights groups, media are going in there counting. Have all Hamas is also the making up numbers, numbers a lot. every single time. Okay. okay, but that's a side point. So here's my bigger question to you: Is when it comes to the issue specifically of terrorism, I've debated this with you so many times. I watched your two-hour debate with Dennis Prager recently, and you make great points that speak to the humanity of the Palestinian people, which people need to center that. I center that as often as I can whenever I speak of it, because I think it's a crucial to never lose our humanity, of course. But you, I think, continually skip over the main impetus cause of this that would help us get somewhere in the conversation. You seem to think there is no effect or no impact of radical Islamist belief systems that are hell bent on destroying the Jewish state and all of the Jews who live there. You skip over that, you don't ever give that any weight or credence. And so of course, it seems as though there's this random purposeless occupation and they're never getting a state. If you skip over that, but that's what's causing the constant terrorism. That's what's causing the constant need to protect Israel proper, the nation from the territories hell bent on destroying them. And that is why another point that's always ignored with terms like apartheid and genocide and all of these. That's why the two million Arabs, many of whom identify as Palestinians who live in Israel, have equal rights, have a great life. Say they wouldn't move into a Palestinian state if it happened because that proves there is no animus about the ethnicity or about the religion. It's about the threat of murder. And you don't acknowledge no, that part of it. I don't. So uh, here's why, Ben. Because, so is it because I'm soft on radical Islam? No, I saw a video today of some monsters beating this poor woman in a town square because they have the insane fundamentalist ideology. I'm a person who was born in a Muslim culture, 
and grew up as someone who identified as Muslim and I became an atheist. Now there's another word for that, it's called apostate, okay? So for normal Muslims, they go, oh, okay, no big deal. You think this, I think that, just like for Christians who are atheists now, you think this, I think that, who cares, right? But for radical fundamentalist Muslims, they'd kill me first. So I got no love for them, I got no interest in them, I don't wanna empower them at all. But that's why I'm against the occupation. Because whenever you have powerless people who are oppressed over a long period of time or attacked and under tremendous pressure, they will always go to radical. So that's the same thing that happened in Iraq. One of the reasons that Ben Manquist and I were opposed to the Iraq war were, look, what do you think is gonna happen? Once we make a mess of it, the worst elements are going to be empowered. But they've been attacking from day one, that's what caused this from day one, not eventually after but occupation. Ben, okay, now we're gonna go back to 1948 and I can't go back to 1948. But like, of course, from the Palestinian perspective, it's not like, oh, there's some Jews here, let's attack them. Their houses and villages and land was taken. So. Of course they attacked, of course, and they lost, right? right. And then but, they won't ever give up on now, that cause. No, I, and you know me, I say the right of return. I love your brothers and sisters, but it's not realistic and it's right. not gonna happen. We need to get to a real peace but deal. But they don't let go of it, they don't listen to you. No, but Ben, it's not that they don't listen to me. For 20 years, Israel's been blocking it. So you can say, hey, you know what? Maybe Mahmoud Abbas should have taken the deal given right. by Ehuda Omer, and that's my stance on it. I me wish he did, I think that that was probably the best one they were gonna get, and they, he should have taken it. But it's that doesn't justify an occupation. And if you say to me, hey, are you worried about the terrorism? Yeah, of course I am. The way that you stop it is you do go through diplomatic routes immediately. So if it was up to me, I would say uh, Palestine is a state. The United Nations should recognize it, America, Israel, everyone should recognize it. It's done. But then Hamas and is still in power. Uh, no, Palestinian Authority. Authority, but, and then they're at war now forever with Hamas. They can be at war in a civil war. That's their business, not my business, okay? But I don't wanna be part of oppressing them. And so, so and my I last question for you. So my yeah. last question for you is, okay, so so we agree terrorism is a problem, right? And if you don't think that that America needs Israel as a special ally in this region, as a, an actual democracy, it is a democracy, and a way to counter these forces that are very anti-US and chant death to Israel and death to America equally. If that's something that you believe needs to be stopped, a it has to be stopped, but. So you can't just excuse the constant terrorism and say, give them a state while they continue to promise no, you to the death to America. So this but, is the but core that's fine, but, but here's my bigger question. Do you think aside from a special ally relationship, do you think the Jewish people, when in a world where there's 22, Muslim, when there's 22 Arab nations, 46 Muslim majority nations, with rising anti-Semitism that you see out of control, that you beautifully speak out against all the time, do you think that the Jewish people need a, safe haven nation in Israel? Do you think it should exist? Yeah, whether I think that it was right in 1948 or not, that ship has sailed. So right. should Israel be a, Jew, a Jewish state that's a safe haven? Definitely, definitely, okay? So look guys. So then you can't live under constant terrorism, no nation would accept that. But Ben, okay, so last thing and then I gotta do the poll and then we gotta go. So. Uh, ben, you, in my opinion, you got the chicken and egg completely backwards. The, Occupation is causing the terrorism. The reason they say death to Israel, death to America is because America is supporting Israel's occupation. We are creating the terrorism through the oppression of the occupation and then pretending to be surprised. Oh My God, I can't believe they don't wanna be occupied. I mean, I gave them a deal which I thought was good. They didn't think it was good once. All the other times I didn't give them a deal that was good at all. And I said, I'm gonna take 50% of your land, 60% of your land. I can't believe you're not satisfied with that. Oh My God, no, the, opp the oppression and the occupation of a powerless people is obviously causing the terrorism. And when we bomb the living crap out of them, that's also terrorism. And that's much worse terrorism. We've Now I say we as in America and Israel, because we are funding it. We've now killed 30 times the number of civilians as Hamas has. That's not definitely 30. terrorism. Not 30. Worse. Not 30 civilians. But, okay, th but 25. But, I, but 25 again, times as we much. will just forever disagree on that then because that is completely inaccurate because Israel's been able to make peace with its neighbors when they are willing to stop promising to kill Jews. No, and that is, Egypt never made that promise before they went to the peace negotiations. You get to that once you go to the table and you get a deal. Egypt kept bombing and bombing and bombing Israel until they did the peace deal. Then they stopped the bombing completely. The Palestinians 
are gonna keep bombing until they get a state. Once they get a state, they might be more bombs. And I then I'm gonna try to, if we have Iron Dome, we try to protect our uh, Israeli brothers and sisters, and we will try to do that as much as humanly possible. But then Israel will have the moral high ground, and the Palestinians would lose the moral high ground if they have a state, but you and think, they say it's not enough. But you think funding for Iron Dome should stop? No, I don't at all. Okay. Oh, I was in favor of funding Iron Dome. Great. But I, that's I'm gonna aid say, to Israel. Yeah, I know. Uh, but it protects civilians. Now, I have do have a controversial opinion about Iron Dome that Washington would never do, which is the Palestinians should also have Iron Dome. So the people were like, no, 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 we can't protect their civilians. I believe in protecting both sides. I'm civilians. super down for anything that protects all innocent civilians and that stops random death in an area full of it. So I all right, agree there with we you go. We agree on that. All right, so you guys had voted in the YouTube chat. Twenty percent said yes, Israel's a special ally of the United States, and eighty percent said no. And YouTube community was closer. Thirty-five percent said yes, sixty-five percent said no. So you can keep voting at YouTube community. Uh, you could also uh, vote in the link down below and, and tyt.com slash polls. But we love the participation during the live show, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern every day. We appreciate you guys, we'll be right back. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.